Hello and welcome to another live demonstration. Today I want to introduce you to the St. Petersburg White Knights pastel colours. So these all have pigment with the titanium white in them and that makes them very much like a gouache, so opaque watercolour. Um, and they're new to the wonderful, I love the White Knights range, um, White Knights made in Russia. Um, and the pans, which they have done for many years um, and traditionally only did them in pans, are moist poured. So it can mean they feel a little sticky, but the paint is poured into them. What I like about that is the ability to then lift really easily and get colour quickly onto your brush. Um, brought out tubes fairly recently and are adding to their range. So they've added these pastel colours, which are opaque watercolours, to their pan and tube range. And I'm using the tube because it gives me that instant wet watercolour, which, because I'm going to be working on black, I find um, much more effective. But uh, what I was surprised was how lovely they are on both. So with an opaque watercolour, it's nice to be able to work on a different colour surface. Um, you can make them transparent by adding more water and you can see here I've got the two different versions fairly neat from the tube and then adding water and I'm going to use that in my demonstration those different techniques but on the white they're really you can really see their opaque quality um, perfectly intermingled intermingleable is what's the word uh, mixable, <laughs> I suppose is easier, with all the white night colours. Um, the one thing I have done is I've added white to this range because I need that white to um, add some light. But on the whole, uh, I am going to use, maybe not all the colours, I'm going to use as many colours as I can, but what I did find was because of the um, subject I'm doing, I needed to add some darker tones which I wasn't getting. So I've brought out my little St. Petersburg White Knight pan set and it will work, show you how well they work together. So there, what I'm doing the painting on is a watercolour paper, a black watercolour paper. Now it was interesting yesterday because I was doing some training with the girls in the office and they used a piece of cartridge paper and she goes well i've tried it what went wrong and the reason was it was cartridge paper black cartridge paper it was the only thing i had at the time and she goes oh, it didn't work it didn't flow like it did on the watercolor paper and the reason was it wasn't watercolor paper so watercolor paper is sized and designed to allow those water and fluid effects so the sizing allows a little bit of absorption but not too much unlike the cartridge which just sucks the colour in and it is really interesting um, that paper does make a big difference to your um, surface to your paints and how they work so if you can try as many papers as you can and then find out which one works best for you because each of them has a different characteristic so this is the Van Gogh black watercolour paper. It's a cellulose paper, but it's great with the pearlescence, the interference colours and opaque colours. So the image I'm doing is it's an amalgamation of a couple of images. So the original images are garlic from my friend's garden and she was very proud of them and has taken photographs which is really useful for me. It gives me a subject to work with. Um, but the whole subject didn't work for me. I tried to break it down into a few sections. Again, it didn't work to, for me. In the end, I chose the choice um, sections. So a bit from one photo and an another couple of bits from others, adding this separately. So I had drawn it out to test the paints and do um, a piece that you can see um, on the the, e, the Facebook image. So I have to usually do one first. But 
I, I couldn't, I had to be able to find a way of getting that same selection of uh, garlic down. So one way is tracing. Now people have debates about tracing. Is it good? Is it bad? I have no problem with it. Tracing, if you are struggling, if it stops you painting, drawing or anything, why not trace your image down? It, you shouldn't be stopped by going, I can't draw. Drawing's important, learning to draw is very important, but if it stops you even trying, trace it down. So in this occasion, what I've done is I drew the original, selecting the shapes I liked, and because I want the same shapes, I've traced down, taken um, an outline. I've used a bit of white pastel pencil on the back, just where the lines are, and transferred it down there. So what I've done is I've traced my own drawing. And again, that's a great way of drawing, sketching. You like what you've drawn. You want to transfer it onto a watercolour paper or another surface. Trace it. You know, if you're not confident drawing it again, trace it down. So there's long debates about tracing and, and I hope you can see that it does have its benefits. So giving me a light outline, the reason I've chosen pastel is because it will dissolve with the water. And I'm going to try different techniques. So like I said, when you're using this watercolour, it's opaque, it's watercolour, you can layer it like you would do a watercolour, but in this um, occasion you're layering up to lights, whereas in watercolour the lights are left first because you're using it on a black surface. I'm not going to be overly worried about which colours I pick up to start with, I'm just going to get colour down. I'm going to look at the original and maybe put some colours in. Now Gary said I won't remember to keep one side white and one side for dirty paint. Probably I'm going to try because the paint is quite opaque it does um, muddy your paper quite a lot and quite easily. So I'm going to try but I cannot guarantee that I will be able to remember to keep one side clean. It is important to keep one side clean with this because it's very, you'll see, I'll show you once it starts to build up, but the very opaque white um, contaminates the water. What I did notice also was how much the colour fades, well not fades, dilutes into the paper. So you put it on quite strong and it, it kind of goes to half strength, which watercolour does. Um, so that was a surprise, but what it did was it meant I had lots of pleasure in layering. And I'll show you that as I go along. Just putting colour down bit of pink now. The colours will change and you'll see them change working like you would do a watercolour. I was training yesterday and I kept saying what's the main ingredient of watercolour paint and it's water, it really is because you don't need a lot of pigment to get a good effect. You need plenty of water. And I think sometimes people really load their brush with a lot of pigment and then they can't get those lovely subtle techniques. So I'm constantly reiterating water. Water is the key to watercolour painting. There's so many lovely techniques you can do just using the water and letting the paint create its own patterns. So garlic, I have lots of garlic facts. You'd be amazed how many there are. So garlic is actually one of the oldest used 
and cultivated herbs. Um, I think archaeologists have found the use of garlic in Neolithic times, so 7,000 plus years ago. And I think they found evidence of it being cultivated 4,000 years ago. So purposely, instead of using the wild garlic, but purposely growing it in areas so it can be used. And that was 4,000 years ago. So a lot, garlic has been used a lot. But if you look at its properties, you can understand why. It has, whew, I have, I've got a list and I got lost, but it has so many properties, not only food flavoring, but in medicine, it has vitamin B, vitamin um, C, antioxidants, oh, I can't say it, antioxidants, um, antiviral, it's, it's used for so many different things. The list goes on. Um, so it is actually a really super herb. I don't like it personally. Um, and the smell you get is happens when you crush the bulb. Um, it releases enzymes and that's the real powerful garlic smell you get. Um, but it originates in Asia, but uh, is used worldwide now. A common herb or use in food. But um, I think I was reading it has the same properties like an aspirin for thinning the blood, but it not only thins the blood, it also regulates. So using garlic tablets to regulate your blood. So if you've got high blood pressure, it helps. If you've got low blood pressure, it helps. It regulates. Um, it was used, I think, Russians. They gave it to their soldiers in their medical packs because it was called, I think, Russian penicillin, I read. Um, so it was part of a medical pack because it has all those antibiotic properties as well. Look at those lovely colours. That's actually working better. I did have a laugh before I came in because I saw what Gary put on the Facebook feed. Now I don't see what he puts on. Um, and I, to be honest, did struggle with this um, because it gave me plenty of surprises. The amount of the colour that disappears and all of that. But like anything, you learn the medium. I haven't used this before. I needed to learn and see what it did. Um, so yes, it was a struggle. And I, f I think I found it really was a struggle because I've got lots of brushes. So for me, lots of brushes means it's kind of a comfort. It means <laughs> if it's failing, I'll just change my brush. If it's not working how I want it, it maybe it's the brush. It, it, I, you shouldn't blame your tools, but for me, it's just kind of a backup that I have a different brush. So I've got um, synthetic imitation sable, which replicates the, the Kalinsky sable, um, different shapes, different sizes. They're kind of a backup. So if it's not working with my old faithful all rounder, a, different brush might help but I'm actually really pleased how it's going so even in a couple of attempts I'm learning um, the characteristics of the paint so like a watercolor I can go back in with clean water and move the pigment just to get a little bit more light and dark and shade Some of these shapes are pretty simple. I just want to show you the lovely characteristics of the paint. So using it like a very thin watercolour at the moment. I will, 
start to build up the layers, which, like I said, first time I used it, I was actually really enjoyed that part of it. After the interesting way that it sat on the paper. Gary did say how long this was going to take, and I've promised him it's about an hour. But I'm looking at the time now, it's taken 15 minutes to get this far. I've got my chocolate with me, I'm alright. <laughs> he has actually got his chocolate with him. Um, yeah, I think that stemmed from last week, something that happened last week. I told you it was rumbling. Oh, was it? <laughs> and said he should have had his chocolate with him. Um, so this time he's taking that to heart. Oh, he's sitting there watching paint dry, really, isn't he? <laughs> yeah. I, like I say, I'm actually quite pleased with the way this is working compared to my previous attempt. It's really satisfying and as I start to layer that's where I'll show you it's just so satisfying you can work with the techniques of watercolour something that you're probably familiar with and comfortable with but actually work in a different way a bit more like an acrylic because you can layer up to those light shades so they are very similar to a gouache um, but they're put into the opaque watercolour range and you will find opaque watercolours in many ranges of paint especially the white and many of you will have either used a gouache or the white um, watercolour now there's nine colours in this range I have to turn the tubes around the right way because it's Russian on one side and it's English on the other. So mint, dune, peach, coral, I think that's lavender, lavender, pink peony, rose quartz, royal blue and lilac. So, and I do know there may be some more coming out, so watch this space. But at the moment, these are actually, you don't need them all. You can get the um, all nine or just a few and work alongside your existing colours. What's also challenging is working on the black because I'm having to think about the dark tones, which is something usually do opposite when you're working with watercolour the darks come in last but because i'm working on the black and i'm working with an opaque color you can see here i've left kind of isolated black areas and here you can't see it yet but as i build up this garlic um you'll see where I'm using the black of the paper as the dark areas like you would do using the white of the watercolour paper. Um, I'm using the black. So I've moved across, which means this area should be now dry enough for me to go back in and put a bit more colour on. Put the pink tip, so garlic, there's 450 species of garlic around the world. And they are part of the lily family. So the bulbs are related to lily. Toxic onions and garlic, both toxic to cats and dogs. So just bear that in mind, don't give you animals, garlic. I can quite imagine my cats actually eating it. They'll look at it like they do most little tidbits I ever give them, which I don't often. Look like I'm trying to poison them and then continue to stir. And it can be a piece of chicken or a piece of steak, but they still will look at you in the same way going, what's that? Why are you trying to poison me? 
I'll have to do a full investigating before I dare to eat it. Maybe that's just my cats, maybe they're just too fussy. But I think I gave the dog a carrot because he was staring at me. I don't usually feed dogs or animals at the table. I, I don't like that. I think it encourages begging. But he was looking at me when I was peeling a carrot, I think. So I gave him a piece of carrot. He took it really quickly, spat it straight out when you realise what it was. But I've had other dogs that absolutely adore carrots. And you can see now the colour is starting to brighten. What I also found was maybe it's the paper or the way I'm working that I'm not as worried about creating cauliflowers. The paper seems to um, allow me to move the paint on the surface without creating those cauliflowers. You'll see when I, in the swatches I did, there was a little bit, but that was done with a very wet brush and I just left the brush on too long. But actually working this way, I found that it does go on quite smooth. I just want to tip. Picking up that pink. I mean, the original colour is much more yellow, much more um, flat, I suppose. But I just love these colours. And I think it works. You'll, you'll see it's a garlic. What I was intrigued about was this shape here. I didn't, I can't say I've actually ever peeled a garlic, um, which I know is quite sad but I don't like it so it's not something I would introduce into cooking unless it was in garlic salt or something like that and it's much more subtle than a garlic bulb so I hadn't actually ever seen a garlic stripped like this and I, this is what really attracted me this is why I used more than one image because this shape is full of wonderful little shapes and yet it looks quite plain with its coat on so I th thought it would look great with lots of these colours so I'm often given I can choose a medium to work with and when something's new is introduced I like to show you just to either put it on your radar to show you what I've learnt from it with a, a few um, tests and a bit of play and a bit of a demo I forgot where I was going with that <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm, I'm painting at the time so yeah and I, I get the choice of what I can bring to you and sometimes it's the product that actually inspires the subject. So I've been wanting to paint this garlic image for a while. I've got had the image from my friend, loved it, absolutely loved it. Um, really wanted to find the right way of interpreting it. And once these paints came, I thought they're the perfect medium to paint um, this subject in. I mean, gouache was on my radar, but I just think these coming at this time just really meant I could bring this image forward. Again, they are still drying back. So I'm going to put another layer on here probably take a quick break. I'm going to pick up some white as well just so I can now start to add a little bit more light. White isn't part of the um, new colours. White has already been there and again I'm using the tube colour. 
but I found I needed to really add that little bit of light colour. So even though I am putting an opaque colour on a black background, I'm still using glazing techniques. So you can see this white is still showing the colour underneath. It's not covering it. Your head. Sorry. But I need to do this bit. And then the side will be alright. Okay. And again, I know the white will drop back. It's not going to be too overpowering. So it's not as strong or bold as I might have done in gouache. Because I'm using it with many of the watercolour techniques. quite subtle which again for me is exciting because I don't normally do subtle the colour I usually put good strong colour on straight away and I always wish to do a little bit more subtle painting but you know when you get into your own technique and as you try and then you do a bit more and a bit more colour this is, because of the way it drops back, it's given me quite nice subtle colours. So again, it's helping me do a technique which my instinct goes against. Just adding more colour. I think this is probably going to be one of the last layers. Maybe not, I don't know, we'll see. But it, it seems to have enough colour on that at the moment. Let's try another layer on here. Once it's covered some of the black paper, the layers are starting to come through. Uh, green. I'm going to leave and do the very fine detail right at the end. Let's see a bit of pink. I am looking at the original and looking at maybe colours that I can see. So as an artist, what happens is you, you see more colour than a lot of other people and it's bringing that colour out. You'll, it'll still be recognisable as a garlic. Hopefully it won't be too garish. But this is where you see beyond um, colour. And it's, it's something to not be afraid of what colours you're putting on. If you want a realistic, then you take a lot of time and you, you mix the right colour. But for a bit of fun, I only have an hour. So I can be a little bit more um, adventurous with colour. Bit of the blue. Okay. Going to because this one's made up. I do find these can be a little sticky, but that is because of the heavy pigment, so the white and the pigment. That mean um, what I did notice is they're all very light fast. So unlike a gouache. Um, which is getting better. Um, modern gouache is definitely getting better with its light fast qualities. Um, 
this all has a high light fast rating whereas her gouache can um, have some low ratings because designer gouache is designed for doing an image and then having it uh, copied so the image is then in a, a folder and it doesn't see the light of day so light fast isn't a big issue um, but the thing about these opaque watercolours is that they have high light fast ratings right, let's just get this one up done and then we'll have a break because I don't know about you but I need to stand back see where I'm going judge decide on my next um, marks and that can only be done if I step away it's like with when I was training yesterday you kind of have to say let the paint do the work stop which is not easy because you kind of want to find out and if you are experimenting and playing you want to do it quickly but a lot of the time you just have to slow down let the paint do what it's going to do because that's where you find these exciting marks and I was letting them make their own I don't like the word mistakes because that suggests that it's something that is wrong but letting things happen and then seeing um, marks that you may not be comfortable with like cauliflowers or bat runs as you call them and then explaining why why this happens I use bat runs but if you're trying to do a flat area they can be a bit of a pain when they appear when you don't want them and again understanding why they happen is all part of going oh why did that happen oh. so I let people just find out for themselves right time to stop take a break so join me in a moment it will allow this color to settle and allow me to decide where I'm going from here Hi, I'm Ali Hargreaves and I'm here to introduce you to Ready Steady Paint. This is a monthly art subscription box for 6 to 11 year olds. Ready Steady Paint has been designed by today's artists to support, develop and encourage those of tomorrow. I have had over 20 years experience as a primary school teacher. I've worked as an artist in residence in a number of primary schools and I'm also a mum. I've seen how creative subjects, especially art, has declined over the years and has been taught less and less in the educational system. We feel very passionate about filling in this artistic void. We're so excited to share the experience with you and your children. We hope to give children a chance to produce beautiful pieces of art with high quality materials. Following a hand curated syllabus, each month subscribed children will receive a box full of high quality artistic goodies in the post. Using these materials, they'll be able to follow the online tutorials delivered by me and access through the Ready Steady Paint website. All this will be conveniently delivered to your door at an affordable cost. There is so much to learn and so many wonderful activities to complete and rewards to gain. So what are you waiting for? Join us on this journey of artistic fun and discovery. Hello and welcome back. So like you can see, I'm actually pleased with how that settled. That second layer is doing the job. So let's try another layer. I'm going to be quite careful not to overdo it. So now it's getting a little bit more of a light base. I can get the colour to ping a little bit more. but don't, I don't want to lose some of the qualities I've got. It's a garlic, Anglo-Saxon word, meaning gar, spear, lack. What was lack meant? Uh, plant. So I think it refers to the... Um, not the plants, but the leaves. I 
and like I say, cultivated into its form of 450 species now. I do like finding um, hedge garlic, what's it called? It'll come to me. Wild garlic? It's, no, not wild garlic, but it's um, Jack of the Hedge, which is a very garlic smelling leaf. And we find that around, and that's grating salads. It's less powerful than wild garlic, but you can find wild garlic around in the UK and probably many other places. It's become such a well-used plant. I think there's another one there. I might put another clove. <laughs> you enjoying your chocolate? That's my last one, without, <laughs> without rustling into the bag and making too much noise. Thanks for an offering. To be honest, I'm not that fond of chocolate. I can probably eat a piece and then that's it, I'm done. Well, if the painting turns out all right, I'll let you have one, how's that? Thank you. Wow. Incentive. What do you mean, if? <laughs> Pressure. If you're happy with it, then you never well, am. Well, you know, and I never am. And I, when I saw the image going on the Facebook feed, I went, oh, that's not as bad as I thought. So I'm like any other artist. Well, I don't know, maybe people are happy. I'm not happy with something. But if I've come back to it and looked at it again and looked at it another day, it's amazing how different that your mindset is. I'll often go, oh, that's I've had an argument recently with a painting and I cannot for the life of remember doing it. Cannot for the life of remember doing it because it looked really good. <laughs> it was a landscape, all of which I swear it wasn't me. Actually found out it was me who painted it. So, you know, I could surprise myself. I was going, no, that can't be me. But yeah, it was. I think I've gone a little too much on that one, but I did find out that you can lift this color, these colors. I probably should have left this. This is actually quite nice. I just wanted that extra bit of color to make it look less ghost-like much more solid because this is a solid item don't like that splob of green in the middle let's do these once And then I can put the white on and just start to define a little bit more. Pink at the tip. Using a dry brush to blend. So this is a cellulose paper um, and it I find it allows the colours to sit on the surface quite well and allows me to lift and manipulate quite easily. Okay. Let's start to pick up some light in here. So I'm mixing white into my colour just to make it another much more opaque. taking colour off my brush in order to move it.
Now this, there's two different textures going on here. You've got the very light, transparent kind of feature of this um, coat, coating, what is it? What's the outer bit? Skin maybe? Yeah, skin I suppose. Um, to the very shiny, solid aspects of the cloves. Um, and it's difficult to get the I'm using too small a brush for this. Um, using a bigger brush is another tip I give people. So you saw there, I was doing a lot of moving, trying to cover an area with a small brush, and this is where you get stripes. Just pick up a big brush, don't be afraid of it. And you cover that area much quicker, cleaner, smoother. I know people's first instinct seems to be go for a small brush. It's kind of a safety feature. But I've learned that actually a bigger brush will do the job much easier. Just following the shapes. A little bit more. Again, I'm just at the moment still just adding colour. It's gone a little speckly here. I'm not sure I dislike that. What I'm trying here is to keep some of the dark coming through because it's in shadow. So this area goes over. So I'm thinking about shadow at the, um, at the moment as well. Because I want it to use the paper as part of the shadow, have it come through that way. Also want a little bit cleaner edges. Pick up the orange. Again, I might pick up some orange on this tip. Right, let's whack on some white. Might be still a bit too wet. So this outer casing or skin, I think we've decided is the right terminology for it, is actually quite light. But I needed the colour underneath before I put on the white because I, I want it to kind of shine through. I don't want to put too much white on, which is always a risk. And you notice I'm actually splaying my brush, getting it quite dry, because that gives me those great lines that I'm looking for. I did pick up a rake, but I think it's a bit too big. So it is often about texture, what you need to make each piece look a little bit different from the next, what you're trying to say about it. So texture on these two is different to the cloves. Very dry brush. Allowing me to get some of that lovely texture and again looking at the shape. I like this and I've enjoyed doing it because it has a very 
simple shape, but it's plenty to work with, plenty to work on, plenty to look at. I'm still having to think about oops, form, shape. How do I make this look rounded? How do I get the lights and shades on without adding too much? Like I say, this paint can be a bit sticky, so I need to add water back really don't want to add too much because I want it as neat as possible again that's why I chose tubes over pans the pans I think will be really lovely for working on the um, white surface along with the tubes but I wanted a really strong colour some light, I think the light's up here. Need more light here. Oops. I'm able to jump around as each area dries. Gives me the true look of it. Now on here is going to be different because I want it to be much smoother. So I want to show the shine. Let's really load my brush, kind of shine and an edge, but not the same um, texture. Can't see that. It's, I haven't got enough white on my. Come back to that. Let it dry. Lost a little bit of form and definition here. <laughs> What's difficult is the original doesn't have a solid light source, so I'm having to kind of judge and add to, which can go wrong. Right. So I'm going to move on and now start to add that little bit of colour which I haven't been able to achieve with the pastels. So working alongside and with the White Knights pans. Maybe a little bit of the red in here because what it's doing is it's, it's a transparent skin. It's kind of showing the colours of the bulbs underneath. And then this. The thing about pans is you don't know the colours once you've taken the um, layer off. 
So it's a, I'll say that's a, either a burnt umber or a burnt, I think it's a burnt umber. Again, it's a transparent colour and it won't give me too much um, strength of colour, but it'll give me enough, just a, a little bit more colour. And it will also work and react to the um, white underneath if it's still a bit damp. It will pick it up and become a lot lighter. I'm going to strengthen that with ultramarine. Great way to get a nice grey, blue and brown. Going to add a little bit of red. Oh, I know what I've forgotten on this one. Let's put some dark on and some light on again. I could just keep going, but I think you will have lost interest by that time. But this is where I got really excited because of the ability to layer. Like I say, work with these watercolour techniques, but still keep layering without, to be honest, making muddy colours. So anyone who's familiar with watercolour will know keep layering and putting colour on gives you muddy colours. Um, but this has allowed me not to just stepping back. Choosing another colour. Okay. So even though this is in shadow, it still will have marks. And I don't like those marks up there. I don't like these here either. Blue and brown. A touch of red. I've overdone it a little bit here. Go back with the white. Oh, I know where I want to go. Just put a little bit more definition. Uh, sorry, along that edge. Right, I think now it's time to go back in with the white. And really get those final lights. Because I've probably got enough layers on now that the whites will be as white as I can get them. And like I say, if you work in watercolour, this, being able to layer and play, it's really refreshing. Using darker. Just 
not explaining itself very well there so let's give it a little bit more color I think it's just too it just didn't explain didn't make sense why that was like it was I have to leave it because I think I'm at risk of overworking. Just to get some detail. Because the skin isn't flat, smooth, it has some marks. Again, I can work on those. You can see there's a lovely bit of pink here. I've missed. This, this, I think it's an alizarin, it's really strong. So where, in a, with a watercolour, I probably would have left this a long time ago. I'm just very much like an acrylic. I'm being able to work correct. Alter. The last thing I'm going to do is put shadow on. Don't like that shape. Your head. But I'm fixing the shape. Well, it's no good if people can't fix <laughs> the shape. Okay, fixed. Right, this has some these little leaves. Uh, work on this. Get this lighter tones back. I think it's gone a bit dark Light there. So this bulb goes round like that. <coughs> Excuse me. I know. I don't know what has happened. This is a bit darker there. This is darker. Using a bit of the, I don't know what colour that is, lilac into the dark to give me a grey tone that I'm struggling with on this one. It's looking better. Back in, final texture back again. I might actually leave that, do the, oh no, it's working. Do the shadow and the best way I've found, because you need to ground things, was I had to put black on, which seems really, strange 
but it was the only way I could get a shadow. Now, the surface that this photo was taken on is a black marble finish. Um, and that reflects the garlic, but not too strongly. So again, I had to find a way to show that. And this worked. So this is just wet at the moment. Another thing I did notice, which was really handy, was you can see where you've wet the page. You know, if you're wetting white, you can't always see um, the paper. But because this darkens it, you can see it. And I want it very wet, so go back in to the areas which are drying. Really wet. And then just drop a bit of colour in. And this looks odd at the moment. But I can bring I'll bring it back. Maybe I won't, it's probably working. What happened was the pigment pushed to the edge, so it gave me shapes. But I needed black, so where the subject touches the um, table, that's the darkest area. So the light isn't reflected under there. I needed just a bit of the black. To darken. The shadow will end up very subtle, but it's enough that it's grounded. Couple minutes and then I think I will call it a day. This is where I'm doing that fluffing bit, which I probably don't need to do. But I'm now looking at the original a little bit more closely than I probably did. And as I've got plenty of layers on, I'm going to get a last. Detail. Sometimes it's these last details that can bring it really back to life. So that wasn't making a huge amount of sense. Let's put some of that purple in. That was quite nice. A bit more dark. It's looking too transparent. It's looking too much like a ghost where it's actually solid. It is a solid item. to make a purple. That's making that much more, the shadow much more solid.
that is catching the light right on there and it's catching the light just there and there the light quite a lot there. Not so much here but it's I'm happy with that now. I think I'm going to leave it because it's not too bad. Don't know if you can see the shadow, I can, but it's just given a nice little kind of white outline. Not so much here, because still actually a bit wet. Might be able to bring it out a little bit so you can see it. The pigment has pulled just there, just grounds it. So. To reiterate, using the nine new White Knight colours, I'm using them in the tube form, available in pans and tubes. Um, I've used the tubes because I like that instant um, paint quality. Use it on black watercolour paper. Um, I hope you enjoyed that and join me on Tuesday for another live demonstration.